Good morning. Would you please stand and we'll sing our opening hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. Christ is risen. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Would you please be seated and I'll invite the children in the congregation to come forward. You want to sit down? How are you this morning? Good? Tired? <laughs> How are you? Tired. <laughs> Too tired and a good. I have a question for you which might be hard. I don't know if it's hard or not. So if you had to tell somebody something about God or Jesus, what would be the one thing that you would want to tell them? Okay. Does it exist? if you want to tell somebody about God? That he exists? Okay. Do you have any other ideas? No other ideas. Okay. But that God is real. Okay. And how would you, how do you know that? How do you know God's real? Did we talk about this the last time? I think we did. How do we know that God is real? You don't know. Well, you must. How do you know? You said God's real, so what tells you that? Okay. The, the, all the creation around us shows us that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So God gives us all the things that are in the world, created all the world, and then we have knowledge that we can apply. God gives us knowledge. God gives us different knowledge, right? We don't all know the same things. Because if we all knew the same things, then we'd all be doing the same things. And there wouldn't be lots of other things happening in the world around us. So we all know different things. And we all know how to do different things. And we're all good at different things. And God gives us all those gifts to share with other people. So there was a man named Paul. And I don't know if you've talked about Paul in Sunday school yet. Um, but after Jesus, there was a man named Paul. And if it hadn't been for Paul, I don't know if you and I would be sitting here today. So Paul was the man who became a Christian, and then he went all throughout, he traveled thousands of miles in a boat and got capsized and all kinds of things happened to him on his travels. But he went to preach about Jesus because he wanted everybody everywhere to know about Jesus and about God. And so he took his message with them to different places where they didn't know anything about God, and he talked about God. So that's why I asked you what you would want to say, because Paul had to begin to tell people that didn't know about God, about God. And he actually did begin in a kind of way, like you said, Malcolm, he began by uh, talking about um, an unknown God. And that was kind of his way in, because other people had other gods. Yes like Zeus, right, mm -hmm. yeah, because that, that's the time that Jesus was living in and Paul was living in, so other gods were around and there was temples to other gods, so Paul's way in was kind of to talk about this unknown God and proclaim that as the God who had created the whole world and that had created everything that was in it, and you're going to hear about Paul today in Sunday school, and about a lady named Lydia. And I'm always a fan of women in the Bible, and my dog's name is Lydia. So that's just an aside uh, that we named our dog after a woman in the Bible. So we're going to say a prayer, and then you're going to go to Sunday school. So can you repeat after me? Gracious God, we thank you for making the world and us help us to use our gifts to proclaim your word. Amen. Okay, we'll see you later. Would you please stand? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. First reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. A reading from the book of Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia. In from sea, convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Taurus and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to Neapolis. And from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in the city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we would suppose there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who was gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her husband, household, excuse me, when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 67, and we'll read it responsibly. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And make his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known upon the earth. Your, your saving, saving power, power among all nations. That the people praise you, O Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. That the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Amen. second reading is from the book of Revelation. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory to it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring it into the glory and honor of all of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of, river of the water of light, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing, nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb, it will be in it, and his servants will worship him. 
he will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will see their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there's a pool called in Hebrew, Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there for a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool and the water is stirred up. And while am I making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was the Sabbath. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, who raised Christ from the dead, speak to us through word and thought, so that your will may be done, and our nightmare give way to your dream for our world. Amen. Paul had a dream, which inspires him to go to Macedonia. What he expected to find there may have been the man <clears throat> excuse me, who was in his dream, and was pleading for Paul to come and help the people there, or perhaps he expected a situation in which he could roll up his sleeves and get to work. There were many surrounding areas where Paul felt that the Holy Spirit was not allowing them to go, so this was a welcome prospect. On the Sabbath, Paul and his companion went to a place by the river, expecting it to be a place of prayer. They found some women gathered there. One of the women was a businesswoman named Lydia, who dealt in purple cloth. Originally, she has come from Thyatira. It is this woman, who was once a stranger herself, who now welcomes Paul and his companion into the group, and she extends hospitality, inviting them to come and stay at her house to make them feel welcome and perhaps less self-conscious. As what we call the church was being formed, some foundational practices were developed. The idea of welcoming the stranger is one of them. It carries over into our modern day church with sides people at the door as we are coming in. We want people to feel some level of comfort as they come into the service and ease their concerns about where they will sit or how to follow the service or whether they belong. A friendly face and a willingness to help out are key. Practically, this works, but I think there's more going on here. The early church grew as people like Paul traveled into different places all around Asia Minor, proclaiming the gospel telling the story about Jesus and his teaching, about his death and his resurrection, about the relationship God sought with humanity, collectively but also individually, and about how this would lead to a new reign of peace, love, and justice. Hospitality from strangers was key to this ministry. 
Paul, Timothy, and Silas, and any others came unannounced into the community that may or may not be receptive to the message that they were bringing. As always, we often hear the good stories, and we don't hear the bad stories of how things didn't turn out so well. Since the Bible is meant to encourage us, uh, we don't want, they didn't want to tell us some of the bad things, I'm sure. People where Paul went had their own religions and their own systems of belief. Although Paul was adept at meeting people in the synagogue to strike up a conversation, there must have been times when his reception was a little bit rocky. And we know that from some of the letters that he wrote. An openness to new ideas was what allowed Paul to speak freely about his own experience about Jesus and about God. Lydia and the women with her engaged in a conversation with Paul. Lydia seems to have been a God-fearer, that is, someone who goes to the synagogue to worship but is not Jewish. She was drawn in, so much so, that her whole household was baptized, and she insists that Paul stay with her. Perhaps to ensure his safety, she was a businesswoman in the community and would have had influence. What became clear to me, though, as I read this passage was the legacy of our faith. From those early days when Paul was establishing churches in various communities in the known world, the ministry was dependent on the kindness and the generosity of others. As they traveled, Paul and his companions were unhoused. Someone had to take them in and feed them and provide a bed for them to sleep in. I think there is significance in Lydia, the stranger, welcoming these new strangers. In Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 through 11, God, through Moses, lays out the history of the people freed from the bondage of slavery. It reads, When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, You shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give me. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, We cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. My father, or my ancestor, was a wandering Aramean. Mark Vernon says this phrase gives him shivers. He states this fragment of text carries the echo of a very old tradition. It is more ancient than the Bible itself. He goes on to explain that it may go back to at least the 12th century before the Common Era, or maybe even the 18th century before the Common Era, making it one of the oldest phrases known to humanity. It is a thin thread back to a memory that is almost lost. 
but somehow these are our people. And if you listen to that passage from Deuteronomy and you lay it over top of the resurrection story and you see how Jesus freeing us from fear and death lays parallel to Moses leading the people out of Egypt and how we began as wandering people then we can see how important hospitality is. The situation from the book of Acts feels a bit like that thin thread to me. It carries an echo of a very old tradition. These are our ancestors. This is our history. Taking a story of freedom that echoes the story of the freeing of the slaves from Egypt, Jesus Christ sets us free to be the children of God, heirs of the promise of salvation. And so what is our response to this? Hopefully, our response is to go and tell others the story so that we may know God and experience grace, mercy, and love, and they may also we have been given a new land, a new home by God, where we have the opportunity to be free from fear and from death. And in order to take part in this new reality, we are called to be brave, just as Paul was brave. But we do not do this alone. We do it together. And Paul didn't do it alone either. He had co-workers who traveled with him, and he had co-workers who stayed in the communities that he had established, and he had co-workers who supported the ministry financially. One of the truths about ministry in Paul's day and in ours is that much of what is necessary to the undertaking of ministry is often not seen or heard. And I know that you can think of many people here in this parish who do ministry that is not seen and not heard and yet is vital to what happens here. Paul was the front man, but Paul could not have done what he did without this network of others behind the scenes. People in communities that he visited and where he had established the church had to keep that church running financially, but also had to pursue the lifestyle and goals that Paul had laid out for them. We have many of his letters to churches he founded instructing people on how to behave, what message to proclaim, and how he kept them all in his prayers. There is a network of people in these communities which oversee them and report to Paul on what is happening. And we continue to do this same work 2,000 years later, which is actually quite astonishing. As I said to the children, if there hadn't been Paul, I'm not sure that you and I would be here today. In our various locations, we represent the continuation of this story, passing on a story to those who are willing to listen and engage with us. In his book, Intrusive God, Disruptive Gospel, Matthew Skinner says there is an important truth about the gospel. It meets people where they are. Paul met people where they were, in their settings, using their language and their concepts that made sense to them in their particular circumstances. It even meets people in their own selves. We are reliant on the hospitality of strangers at the same time as we extend hospitality to others. The alien becomes the familiar and the companion to the alien who in turn becomes the familiar, and so this cycle continues from 1800 before com the Common Era when the wandering Arameans went down to Egypt. And we are reliant on the generosity of others to keep the ministry, that network of people behind the scenes working, so that the message may be proclaimed and the community of believers can reach out to those around them engaging in the challenges that their neighbors face. There will always be an audience, 
for the message that we proclaim. Like Paul, we search for effective methods and new opportunities to share. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for your child Jesus, the Word made flesh, the Christ who came to set us free from fear and death, to teach us joy and love. Help us as we strive to serve you here and now. We pray for hospitality and generosity shown to all so that the stranger is welcomed, the messenger can pass on the experience of acceptance, and your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Would you please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel as, is, as we're able. Let us pray. O oh God, may our faith in you leap up that we may experience our grace and overflowing love. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray that our risen Lord may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray this morning for our Church of St. Margaret of Scotland, for Trinity Church, and for Good Shepherd. We pray for and give thanks for our leaders and for their strong leadership. We pray that you'll continue to lead them as they face the challenges that, they, that surround them every day. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. In our Toronto cycle of prayer, we pray for Bishop Robertson. We pray for isolated and pers persecuted churches, that they may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray that we may that we pray that He may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, especially those experiencing drought in Ethiopia, Sudan, and Kenya. We pray for those who lack work or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. We especially pray for the peoples of Ukraine, those in Sri Lanka and Syria. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. This morning, we remember in our prayers those of our family and friends with immediate needs and concerns. We pray for Peggy Russell and her family as they grieve the loss of Peggy's daughter, Susan. We also pray for Georgina Ferguson and her family and their friends as they grieve the loss of Wally. 
We also pray for those affected yesterday by the tornado in Uxbridge. Please surround them with your heavenly peace. We pray that he may reveal the light of his presence to all who are sick, those mentioned on the back of our service leaflet. We pray for the weak and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Yes, Lord of glory. That they may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear fruitful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Accept all we offer you this day and bring us to that eternal city of love and light where Christ is King. We ask this in his name. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymns of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. We were buried in your tomb. Live in us, that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people.
Let us pray. Father, you restored us to life by raising your son from death. May we who receive this sacrament always be strengthened to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Please be seated for a moment for some announcements. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries? No one's talking, okay. Um, so there are a number of announcements in your uh, bulletin at the back. I want to remind you um, that Messy Church is on Saturday at 4 o'clock. It begins with crafts, and then there's story time and music uh, by the Brays from um, the Good Shepherd and Stainer. And then a simple supper following all the COVID protocols. The yard sale is on the 4th of June. Uh, do you want to say anything about that? Okay. It's not COVID. <laughs> so we have two weeks. Uh, if you're bringing any items, I got to get it in my head. If you're bringing any items, they come on Friday the third, anytime after two o'clock, I'll be here to, to receive things, and we'll be there. Will be a few of us here starting to set up. Sale starts on Saturday, excuse me, at eight o'clock. There will be lots of treasure. There'll be games for people, lots to eat. Hopefully, the weather's great. So we'll pray for that. Uh, if you have any other questions, or if I've missed something, please let me know after the service. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Um, movie nights continue. The uh, book club is uh, continuing with Michelle. And um, the day camp for summer is from July the 25th to July the 29th. Uh, if you are interested, uh, there's a form to fill out for children uh, to come. It's first come, first serve. Uh, space is limited. And if you want to help with that, you could speak to me. Uh, and I would appreciate that. Uh, at the very back, in big letters, you will notice the financial situation. Just to make you aware um, of what's happening at the church uh, and how we're doing so far. Uh, if you don't know, then you can't uh, do anything about it. So we want you to have the information available to you. Um, any other announcements? Okay, then we will stand and sing our closing hymn, Praise the One Who Breaks the Dark.
cease to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.